head is something we've heard countless times, especially us, that deal with anxiety and lack of confidence. The simple saying, it's all in your head, it tumbles us down. We are aware of it, we know it's our imagination. However, most of us, we don't have control over it. We let our imaginations run wild, forever imprisoning us in our negative thoughts. Throughout my early teen years, I developed social anxiety. But I was not aware of it back then. And it wasn't as if I woke up one day and suddenly withdrew myself. It subconsciously built inside me, eating me away. And as an emotionally vulnerable teen, I entered this long state of confusion and self-denial. My younger self used to think that maybe I was feeling under the weather and would push myself into socializing. However, neither the weather, the mood, nor the ambience around me mattered because the fear of being asked the question in front of the whole class, the fear of having to feel that embarrassment, that surge of embarrassment, was still inside me. And despite my evident behavioral changes, no one seemed to notice the side of me. And that's because one in five of us have anxiety and go unnoticed. An estimated amount of 280 million adults have depression and anxiety, according to the NHS. This is only an estimate for adults. There are so many more out there, kids, teens, that have to deal with their intrusive thoughts alone. And the most common symptoms of anxiety are the constant need for reassurance, inability to focus, and lack of sleep. These were all my symptoms. And as these bunched up, my grades dropped. From sitting at the front of the class, I found myself at the back, the very back seat. And watching my classmates join MUN, interactive groups, and athletic teams, it plummeted my ounce of confidence. Because I thought that if only, if only I had enough motivation, I would be out there with them. But after many years of self-diagnosis, I came to a point in my life where I realized that it wasn't the fact that I lacked motivation, but that I did not have confidence. And in that very moment, I understood the golden rule of my life. Motivation is not a precedence to action. It's a result of action. Confidence is what drives you to be able to make a change. Confidence is what helps you to leave your fear behind. And this realization, it led me to my self-confidence journey. This journey was not an easy experience, but it was an experience that I would ever trade anything for. Because I learned to listen to myself, to learn about who I am, and most importantly, to accept myself as this. Fear and shame hovered around my youthful years for far long, for super long. But I've always had this urge, this eagerness to make a change, to help others. And with my new profound confidence that I've never had in my life, I needed to use it to its full extent, which led me to join an entrepreneurial competition with my peers. We proposed our idea of a new, friendly, educational environment. However, much to our dismay, we were not admitted into our next round. We were eliminated. But as young adolescents bubbling with the eagerness to help, we stuck to our plan. A month, late, a month after our rejection, we found ourselves eight hours a week signing documents, legalizing papers, and contacting lawyers. Our hard work and dedication led us to finding our very own NGO, an NGO that aimed to get rid of the hierarchical gaps between students and teachers, an NGO that taught their students to find their own identity. We aimed to do so by offering six different courses taught by students themselves. We believed that as teens, we all share the same experiences when it comes to school. And with this community of people that have the same experience, new learners, new students, enter this environment of safety. These learners enter this community 
of not being ashamed of their educational levels and being able to openly ask their teachers for help. And through this program, we got over 2,000 applicants nationwide and 300 students. With all that we were able to accomplish as a team, and with all that I overcome on my own, this thought still exists with me. Where, what if I still had the same mentality as my younger self? What if I was still ashamed by my very own existence? What if I still hated myself? Where would I be? I definitely wouldn't be up here on stage, but rather, I hope that my 12-year-old self looks at me proudly and warmly embraces me for finding the confidence, gaining the motivation, and being a factor in making a change.